and also you can set your questions. So lunchbox learning. We are joined by Nat, a senior job ambassador, who is going to be talking us today. Uh, talking to us today about dyslexia. He's put together a fantastic session for us all, which we will be recording. Some of you may have already spotted the camcorder. And this is simply so we can put the presentation up on uh, Trustnet so our other colleagues in the regions and countries can view it also. So I will hand over to Mark. All right, nice stuff. Well, hey guys. Um, so this is my lunchbox learning on dyslexic advantage. And I want to give you a bit of background about why I'm doing this today. Um, so uh, disabilities and mental health is something very close to my heart and it's a project I've been working um, on my personal development day as a job ambassador. Um, so for this I've created my own act social action project called Dyslexic and Proud and Half Full and I've been getting funding from a range of organisations um, to deliver workshops to young people and organisations to not only show why to say what dyslexia is but also show that there's positive attributes attached to it so actually you can feel empowered and like there's some good things. Um, so get started, I wanted just to find out a little bit about what you guys already know and see some like true and false questions. I must say, if you do uh, get it right, there are sweets available, so it's very worth it. Um, so start off with, if you um, think it's true, stand up. If you think it's false, sit down. And if you're not sure, just kind of like hover. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so dyslexia means the same thing as a specific learning difficulty, true uh, debatable or false. So again, dyslexia means the same thing as the specific learning dis difficulty. True, stand up if you think it's true. Okay, um, yep, it is true. Um, the term specific learning difficulty refers to a range of conditions, um, but dyslexia falls into that category. As I have there's way too many people, I'll just throw some sweets and hope for the best. So, <laughs> okay, that could have gone better. But, um, and now for the next uh, one, I need a volunteer. Who thinks um, they're really good at English, um, pretty much doesn't have dyslexia and can't really, uh, like, kind of understand it? Or I just need a volunteer, actually. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, Sarah, great stuff. <laughs> so you cannot answer a question um, until you solve this Rubik's Cube. So if you want any more sweets and stuff, but as soon as you feel, uh, finished it, let me know, and you can join back in with the game. All right, Thank you very much. fantastic. OK. <laughs> my my seven-year-old showed me last night how to do a Rubik's Cube. Yeah. <laughs> so you, should be, you should, be, should be perfect. <laughs> Okay, so let's see if we can get this before Sarah can finish the Rubik's Cube. So, number two, dyslexia only affects reading skills. Stand up if you think it's true, sit down if you think it's false. All right, pretty confident. Yep, it's false. Dyslexia can uh, affect a r r wide range of things, from kind of memory to like math to like coordination, like a whole range of things. Uh, dyslexia is more common in males. True, false. Okay, now that is true, but it's important to know the reason why it's true is that um, a lot more males happen to get tested, so it's the likelihood is that it probably is more even, but um, guys seem to get tested maybe because they more tend to be more disruptive in class and thus get more likely to get uh, um, statemented or a learning plan. Okay, um, yeah, I'll... I'll give one, one to you, yeah, <laughs> before I hit an eye out. Okay, great stuff. Um, people with dyslexia see words backward. So stand up if you think people do see words backwards, or say sitting down if you think they don't. Okay, yeah, so people with dyslexia... Um, every, it's a spectrum, so everyone kind of has it differently. So some people do see words backwards, others do not. Um, now, the second one is very similar. So, do, is a sign of dyslexia writing letters backwards? Yes or no? Yeah, um, so it's true. Like, though it is a sign, so not every dyslexic sees le letters backwards. Like, I know I do. Though, there's apparently there's not much scientific evidence to prove it, but no, most dyslexic people will say, yeah, they do. So, look, very common getting your D's back to front, or your B's and your Q's and your P's. Um, but later I'm going to show you ways to kind of get around that. Um, 
And two more. Uh, people with dyslexia are po poorly motivated. True or false? Okay, so you guys all think false. Well, actually, I'd say it's uh, a bit debatable because though dyslexia doesn't make you poorly motivated, it um, does, however, kind of lower your aspirations. Like in school, if you're struggling, you're just not going to want to bother. So you're going to be a bit more disruptive. You're going to be poorly motivated. So given the right support, absolutely not. But sadly, there are a lot of people with dyslexia that are poorly motivated. And this is exactly why I wanted to do things like this. And... Number eight, uh, dyslexia is curable. True or false? Oh, yep, yeah, correct again. Um, it is not curable, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, okay, this one's a bit more tricky. Uh, dyslexia can, cannot be caused by head injuries. True or false? Um, the answer is actually false. Um, with... Um, Dyslexia, it's very uncommon, but you can actually get it through head injuries because it's a part of the brain that is affected. And the last one I think I'll do is dyslexia can be genetic, true or false? Okay, yeah, uh, most of you got this right. It is genetic. So um, if a member of your family has dyslexia, you're far more uh, likely to have it yourself. Um, it might not go directly down the thing, but say if your, uh, your grandma has it or your great nan, like, there's a high likelihood that you might yourself have dyslexia. So as I can see, you guys have a quite a good broad understanding of dyslexia, but it's not as simple as just not being able to spell very well or not being able to read. Um, so, Sarah, how are you getting on with that Rubik's Cube? <laughs> well, what I wanted to demonstrate with the Rubik's Cube is, um, though a lot of these answers I'm pretty sure Sarah knew the answer to, but it's in her head, she just can't figure out. And that's very much how dyslexic thinks. Um, every time you want to get an answer in your head, it's like you've kind of got to do a Rubik's Cube. And it's really frustrating because I can't do Rubik's Cubes either. They're really difficult. Um, but eventually you will get there. Uh, it just takes you a little bit more time. Now... Um, just for a firm definition, this is what the uh, British Dyslexia Association actually says. So dyslexia is a specific learning difficulty that mainly affects the development of literacy and language related skills. It is likely to be present at birth and be a lifelong in its effects. It is characterized by difficulties with that word, processing, rapid meaning, working memories, processing speed, and the automatic development of skills that may not be matched up to individuals' other cognitive abilities. So that's quite a lot of writing. And for me, um, it doesn't really mean much. But what I kind of got from it is that if you have it, it's for life. And it's kind of a range of processes. But I wanted to kind of break this down and find exactly what is dyslexia um, and give people a bit of empathy. Because I know everyone in this room has heard of dyslexia. And you might have it yourselves. Your children might have it. Friends might have it. But to really kind of get a grips um, with it um, can be quite difficult. So just to have an idea of how big dyslexia is, one in every 10 people um, have dyslexia in the world. So out of this group, there's at least a few dyslexic in the room, even if you know it or you do not know it. And that equates to 6.3 million people in the UK. So it's really worth um, finding out about it. Um, like I said, in your workplace, you'll, there'll be people having it on your bus, like everywhere. So rather, like, it's just good to understand that people might have struggled with certain difficulties, but definitely not to underestimate. Item. Um, now for this, like what does dyslexics find hard? Because though this is a workshop on the positive things of dyslexia, there are a lot of things that, that are very difficult. Um, so those are like, the main things, but I wanted to show you something that um, a friend of mine made, and I think for me it perfectly describes uh, what it is. So who here is, thinks that they're in a really good reader? You look like a good reader. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I want you to read this out loud, if possible. Okay. All righty. So starting from there. Okay. Um, Dyslexia is characterized by difficulty in learning to read fluently and the accurate. Oh, actually, stop that. <laughs> um, Okay, now we'll start reading it. <laughs> um, dyslexia is characterised by difficulty in learning to read fluently and with accurate comprehension, despite normal. <laughs> 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 um, 
this includes difficulty with biological answers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So as you can see, like um, though you are able to read it, it just takes a long time. Like the Rubik's Cube, it takes a little bit of time to like decode it. Um, and Obviously, all dyslexic people read in different ways. So for me, this is very much how I see it, where the words are just continuously interchanging. But some people see it in kind of like waves or moving. So this is just one example, but hopefully it gives you a little bit more empathy that why it takes so long. Um, so all of this, you're thinking, um, that doesn't sound really good to me. Like, how can dyslexia have any positives? Uh, well, for me, uh, I think this really explains dyslexia to me. So everyone knows this is a tube map, and say, can anyone say, so if we're at Shepherd's Bush and we want to get to Liverpool Street, how would we get there? Anyone? Central. Yeah, Central Line. So going across here, it's by far the most logical route. Um, and that's what anyone with a kind of non-dyslexic brain would talk. But with dyslexia, it's, it's not as logical as that. So for instance, you might start Shepherd's Bush, you might go down the overground, up the Northern Line, you might go around the Central Line a few times, you might even take the Emirates Air Line, which no one ever does, uh, <laughs> and then eventually you'll get yourself to Liverpool Street. Now, again, so that takes a lot longer. Get into work, why would you take a route that takes like twice as long? Well, I would say the benefit to that is, is that you get far more coming in, like you get to see the trees, you get to see like the London Eye, you get to see so much more. So yeah, it takes you a little bit longer to get there, but you're a lot more innovative. You're, you're, um, you go a different back route, you take the scenic route. And I think that's a lot what dyslexia people do um, and why they tend to be a bit more creative because rather than just hitting roadblocks, they find other ways around it, other ways more problem solving, which people with, who do not have dyslexia might just not even consider. Um, so going on to um, a few more things of like what the good things of dyslexia is that people are more innovative thinkers, they're excellent troubleshooters, really creative, like I said, just look at this presentation, um, really good communicating, vivid imaginations. Now, the best analogy I always do to describe dyslexia and what I think um, is a gift that I wouldn't get rid of is it's just like being Spider-Man. Because um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the first Spider-Man movie. Um, they made it like three times, so you probably would have seen it by now. And Peter Parker, a very ordinary guy, a bit boring when someone would say, you know, um, and there was nothing really special about him. But when he kind of got bit by that spider, it's essentially when he kind of got diagnosed with dyslexia. At first, it seems a bit of a negative. You've got a big bug bite on you, you're falling over the place, you're putting webs all of, um, over, you start hearing voices in your head. Um, you just feel a bit of a freak, really. Like, he, was, he failed in school, he just couldn't fit in anywhere, and he didn't understand what was going on with him. Most people with dyslexia feel like Peter Parker, a bit of an outcast. But as soon as he was able to learn um, his condition, he actually realized that he was pretty amazing. He could kind of like sling webs, he had a spidey sense, he could fight crime. So once people understand dyslexia, you become a crime-fighting badass like Spider-Man. Um, it really is like being a member of the X-Men. Sure, there are some downsides, um, but the positives are amazing. It's kind of like the next stage of evolution, but not for people who aren't dyslexic. Um, so that's like the way that always made me feel good about it. Now I'm going to play a little game just to show you guys um, about who is dyslexic, because there are some amazing individuals. And let me know, um, just like shout out, and Sarah will give you some sweets um, if you get it right or not. So we've got Spielberg, or Stanley Kubrick, both amazing um, directors. Now, who thinks who is dyslexic? Um, actually, it's um, Spielberg is the dyslexic one. Um, so yeah, again, it's like people you wouldn't ne necessarily kind of think, but um, they find different ways of coming, uh, finding ways around their issues. Um, all right, bonus points if you guys know who this is. Come on. <laughs> uh, this is Alexander Bell. He invented the telephone. And this guy here is Edison, who invented the light bulb. Now, who do you reckon is dyslexic, Bell or Edison? Um, it's actually Bell. Now, the interesting thing about Alexander Bell was um, he did have dyslexia. And though this is only um, 
There's not incredible amount of facts to uh, back this up. I think he invented a telephone because he did struggle with writing. So rather than just say, like, keep writing, think, I can't do this, he found another way around it. And then thus invented the telephone. Um, so a really amazing chap, which we should all remember. All right. Now, this one person you should know, but really you should have known Alexander Bell. So <laughs> anyone knows this? Harry Styles. And Jennifer uh, Anderson. So, who out of these two is dyslexic? Um, you would think Harry is dyslexic by his terrible songwriting, <laughs> but um, actually, um, it is our lovely member of Friends. Um, so, yeah, m people who are most surprising, sometimes some of the best actors are dyslexic um, because they find they realize with words are not so good, but they're able to find ways to remember the words through the dyslexia. Um, all right, so anyone knows the artists of this? Yep, Da Vinci and Albert Einstein. Who's the dyslexic out of these two? Both of them. Um, yep, so Da Vinci was absolutely fantastic. He used to not only write backwards, but he used to, like when reading books, he used to read every other page. So he would read a lot faster. So that's a really amazing way of kind of getting more done in a short amount of time. And Einstein is a very famous dyslexic. Um, his brain obviously was absolutely incredible. Though he kind of got stuck at the first initial block, he kept on persevering. And when he found out it, he found the theory of relativity. So I think with dyslexia, if you keep pushing at it, you're eventually going to invent a theorem, a theory. Um, and I will do... Okay, this is a good one. Um, so we have Steve Jobs or the cast of the Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, it is. Um, they actually all are. So Steve Jobs, everyone know, can't, can't program to save his life but he uses dyslexia for other ways to be the more innovative public speaker. And Pirates of the Caribbean, every single actor of the main cast is dyslexic. And yet the film has the most energy, kind of fun, and it's a film that everyone can enjoy. Um, I'd say for my favorite one, we've got Paul McCartney and John Lennon, who I'm a massive fan of. Do you guys, any guesses? Yeah, it's John Lennon. But what I really love about this example is that these two are rated the best songwriters of all time. And I would definitely agree with this. Um, and now together they form an amazing partnership. Uh, McCartney was really better at the kind of ballad side of things, so it was very kind of analytical. But John Lennon was more imaginative and created the more crazy lyrics like dead dog dripping from a something high, like really crazy things. And I think together they use both their um, different wide brains to create an advantage. So it's a good thing when you're working with people or hiring people with dyslexia, actually think maybe they could benefit your team with a different kind of outlook and perspective. Um, and the last one which I wanted to finish on is these guys. So um, Steve Jobs or Bill Gates. Uh, yeah, I'll go, so we said job. So actually what I meant to do was this guy, uh, Richard Branston. Um, so yeah, he is probably the one of the most successful businessmen of all time, and he has dyslexia. So I wanted to show this little video just to prove that I'm talking truth. Um, At an early age, I mean, I've... Um, didn't know I was dyslexic at the time, but um, I am dyslexic. Um, and therefore, uh, when I went off to school, I found conventional schoolwork um, hopeless. Um, uh, you know, IQ tests, I would, you know, turn them upside down and, you know, whichever way I turned them, I, I couldn't, make, couldn't make sense of them. You know, I, I decided at a very young age that I needed to get out of this environment and, um, and you know, carve my own way in life. And, uh, unfortunately, you know, I felt, you know, I was strongly anti-Vietnam War that was taking place at the time. Um, you know, I was, uh, um, you know, very keen on the idea of students. He then goes on to talk a lot about the war. But um, as you can see, <laughs> he is, um, like, a really, like, inspiration. I think if he can do it, I'd say, like, 40% of all self-made millionaires do have dyslexia. Um, so if you ever meet someone with dyslexia who's feeling a bit down in the dumps, like to say you're far more likely to be a millionaire than like a lot of their peers. But 
As well as um, the pros of it, dyslexia can be an issue, and it is a big issue. So how do you overcome it? So here are a few tips and tricks of um, spelling. So I really do struggle with just remembering the words, the patterns and the formats. So I use a cat to remember ocean, a goat to remember laugh, a compass to um, waste that, and an elephant uh, to remember Bacars and said for Superman. And there's lots of different ways, but just to kind of um, demonstrate how I do it, it's like, it's a mononic. Um, so, uh, so for Superman, I kind of would write down this. So I'd be a uh, Superman and I dance. So it's a little bit silly, but it's kind of like how I remember it. Um, and with the others, I got cat uh, for ocean. I'm like only cats. Um, uh, let's see, like with like a narrow vision. Um, sorry, for the goat, I would be like laugh at the ugly goat. Ha. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I know bit mean, but it helps you remember it. And for the elephant, um, as it's a very common one, big elephants can't always understand small uh, entrance uh, exits. So there are like lots of different ways to remember it. But I kind of think when I write stories now, it's kind of like being an inception. I like have a story within a story within a story. So it makes things far more interesting. And does anyone know um, how people remember uh, North, East, South, West? Yeah, Dawn? Um, exactly. I mean, I remember it slightly different, so I always do like never entertain sexy women, but, <laughs> you know, whatever works for you. <laughs> um, so when it comes to reading, um, reading can be very difficult. Now, there are a lot of books, which I've got a few examples here, which um, are dyslexic friendly. Now, you can find these in most libraries. Um, what makes them dyslexic friendly is, one, um, the paper it's written on is more matte, so it's less shiny. Um, it's normally done on like a yellow paper, which kind of changes the contrast. And it's got a special type of font, which is more weighted at the bottom, which um, helps people read. Like, I will go into more detail on it later, but essentially, like, when you've got um, a B, it can be very obvious, it can be a D. But with these, it's more, like... It's more weighted at the bottom, so it seems heavier. And the top is, so every kind of little line is very unique. So in your brain, it finds it very difficult to get confused. But now these books were perfect uh, learning to read and growing up. However, as you might be aware, not everyone, especially you guys, might want to read The Young Werewolf. Um, so trying to think of like other books to go with. Um, like in terms of my favorite books, Oh, so this place is messier than my room. Um, so we've got um, A Clockwork Orange is my favourite book. And why? Because if you try reading it, it makes no sense. It's a quarter English, a quarter Cockney, and a quarter Russian. So when you read it, it's like, drill on me droogs, be on my gillywags and wallywubs. <laughs> and I, the way I um, kind of assumed it, very much like uh, her own like, well, she did like train spotting, who actually writes, uh, or I can't find a page that has no swearing in, but um, he actually writes as he like, as the Scottish people talk. So the way I kind of configured it, if I'm going to struggle reading anyway, I might as read a struggle with a book that everyone else struggles with. And as a result, this became my favourite um, like books to read, books that to normal people, well, normal people make absolutely no sense. And I find now that my brain's able to miss words but still place the story together. So it's a very good kind of way to do it. But um, say if you do want to read Harry Potter, um, which uh, Sarah will pass out copies now. And I've actually got a couple of Harry Potter books here. Because um, like, this is the most common books. Okay. So you've got the colourful one. <laughs> um, go to the first page. So everyone I know wanted to read Harry Potter. I never read Harry Potter till a few years ago because the way the kind of the book laid out is, well, this isn't the stakes are friendly. I mean, they're too close together. The font looks um, is very dull, so the brain moves about, and it's just pretty difficult to read. But the ways I found of getting around this um, is by using. Uh, different like coloured bits of papers which we'll hand out in a minute. 
So what I want you guys to do is use the different colors and see what kind of works best for you. Um, different colors work better for different people because the brain, um, the different wavelengths uh, confuses the brain and kind of makes the word move, move around. So it's normally, if you're using a yellow, the opposite color to yellow is the frequency that confuses the brain. So I'll leave now just to have a quick read. Uh, what color is working best for you guys? Oh, interesting. I'm always a yellow kind of guy. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> I always struggle with this kind of text anyway. Much prefer. Yeah, but obviously those are the books that are like normally published yeah. and not everything is done on the, the colourful books. So now yeah. I've um, that nice green, the Yeah, yeah. Really, I find it a lot easier. I have to always do that. Um, so would anyone care to share like what colour worked best for them and which ones didn't? Um, blue. Blue? Oh, all of you? Yeah. I Oh, uh, cool. Uh, I think just like, I'd be curious to know, like a uh, set of hands, so who found yellow most e easy? Oh, that's interesting. It seems to be people on the same tables who found the same colour useful. Okay, how about green? Uh, anyone had a pink one? And any other colours I forgot to mention? Great. Oh, how was that one? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I use yellow myself because I find it just kind of keeps it on the one page and it just keeps your brain on track. But um, this is amazing for some people, but it still doesn't work for everyone. Um, so another good way that helps people to read is um, audio books. So either on SoundCloud, Audible or YouTube. Um, and now a little trick that I use is that so I'm still reading and still learning is I read about two or three words ahead of the audio book. So every time my brain kind of gets tired and kind of like glitches out because it's always a bit glitchy, uh, the audio book kind of like gives me a nudge and kind of keeps me on track. Um, so then I'd go with this, but... <laughs> Did you see, it's, it's very nice. You can get Stephen Fry to read it and everything. Um, oh dear. Uh, but, I mean, this is all well and good at keeping you ahead with your peers. But if you want to get that one step faster, for instance, I read books at an incredibly fast rate now. So I can get a book done in like a few days, a really big one. But I still have dyslexia. So how I do this is I go on YouTube. I find an audio book that I want. And you know when you go on the settings, you can change the speed of it. So I'll change it uh, to like the really fast speed. So as it's reading, it keeps kicking me up the bum. So I have to read at a really fast pace and it just keeps me on focus. Um, and I also do like the Da Vinci thing where I miss a page. So even though you've got these boundaries, you can overcome them and actually make sure you're ahead of the crowd and doing better than your peers. Um, now, these books work Harry Potter, obviously very common and work great uh, for very well-known things, but not every book has an audio book. Say, for instance, you want to read the new Game of Thrones, um, what is it, like uh, The Winds of Winter, that isn't even out yet, and as soon as it comes out, you, why should you have to wait? Now, a good way I use is that on your Mac, you've got a software that can like read it to you. If you do not have a Mac, you can use Google Translate, which what I do is I like I translate it then into Spanish, and then you reverse it to English, and then you can actually read it out. Um, so it's a free software to read out text. Or you've got Read and Write, which I got as um, part of my uh, access to work, um, which I'll go on about in a bit more in a minute, but it's what everyone can have access to if you feel that you've got a disability. And it'll actually like read it out to you, um, which I actually do for like all my like long emails, um, if I'm trying to rewrite things to make sure I get the spelling correct. Um, but sometimes you, um, 
if say you don't have the software, not connected to the internet or for whatever reason, a little tip that you can do if you have say a big email, you can actually set change the font. So what I was saying about the dyslexic font, so if you go onto like that website or there's others available and you can download a free font and if you can kind of see here all the words are weighted at the bottom and people with dyslexia have found like there's been studies that it's a lot more easy to read and there are things you could do on Adobe Reader where you can just change the font to any book. So if you're reading a really boring kind of a paragraph or spreadsheet or anything, you can make these really easy changes. Um, and it really has proved like invaluable to me. Rather than having to, like we saw earlier, have to like decode every word, you can just read fluently. Um, and it, it really does, it's a game changer, which automatically hides your aspiration. Rather than going for a job that doesn't require reading because you just think it's not for you, you've actually got a chance of doing something like becoming a teacher, which before would just be completely off limits. Um, now when it comes to writing, um, there's some really cool software. Again, your Mac can do it. Um, Google Translate can also do it. But the best software I found um, is like Dragon. So it's, it looks a bit corny, but you put this on and you do it and you speak and it literally writes it out. Um, and it's pretty damn perfect. The only thing it's not so good on is uh, writing swear words. <laughs> so it's like, oh, that ducking cat. <laughs> um, but there are other ways. Oh, well, <laughs> um, you can add words. Now, one thing I wanted to do before I move on from the reading is I only got these pens today, but I was very lucky enough to be sponsored for this workshop. So all these colour tints you've got and these pens were kindly donated. Um, now, for people who really struggle with like big words or in tests, these pens will actually read out, uh, read out. And it sounds like, how can they be so good? But for an example, I'll do a bit of a test. So I'm going to get the pen to just read a bit of Harry Potter. Um, and it's surprisingly, so far, it's been 100%... Oh, dear, that's the wrong one. Uh, it's been 100% effective every time. So, yeah, you just turn it on, and then with this lid, it just kind of scans the words. So if I do the first line of Harry Potter... Yeah. yeah, see, uh, it's absolutely perfect. Um, so, someone else want to give it a go? Any lovely volunteers? Yes. Okay, I think it can come over here. So, all you've got to do is click the centre button and go over any line um, that you'd like or any word that you're unsure of. Um, so, like, kind of... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's this could be a really amazing tool. Um, the one th um, thing I would say about all, um, like this soft, this and the Dragon Dictate, which are amazing, is that they are actually really expensive. Um, so if you want, if you're like, if you're just a bit of a casual dyslexic, you know, you, you dabble in a bit of bad spelling, then um, <laughs> then these are absolutely fantastic. But if you, is this a constant thing that happens every day, then I really do recommend splashing out. But it doesn't mean that you have to pay. Um, now, these are just a few options that I'm really not going to go into depth with because it would take a bit too long, but really important to know. So, um, if you're under 25, you can get what used to be called a statement, um, but now it's called the Educational he Health and Care Plan. And this is amazing because in schools, they'll accommodate you. You'll get extra time in exams. You, um, you also could get your own computer and own quiet room. You can have someone help you with like extra like support and literacy. There's, uh, they can change all the colors for when they do prints out so you have a bigger version that is purple. They can do a whole range of things. Um, if, however, um, you are over 16, so over 25, and you're in work, you can do access to work. Now, this is something with everyone who is like who has proof or that they are have a disability. Um, so it can be dyslexia, like autism, like literally anything. Um, then they can do. So for me, I've got free software. They've got like tints that can go over the Mac. Um, you can get what drag and dictate. Um, I will. It was, it was really amazing. Um, even at, at university, I was lucky enough, they actually gave me a computer, which was like, yes, dyslexia. Um, and I still use it today. So, um, and it just, 
it puts you on a level level playing field, which I think is um, really amazing. Another thing to know is that our DSA, um, Disability Living Allowance, which a lot of young people we work with do happen to be on, uh, can claim it. And it doesn't matter if you're working or not. And this will give you a little bit of extra money like each month. Um, it, I think the maximum amount is 320. Um, and that's really useful because then you can buy these softwares, you can buy like, different books, because uh, it can be quite expensive continuously printing on different colored paper. So that'll put you at a level playing field. Now, say if like you guys, um, you, that you haven't got any statements, you haven't got a plan, but you still think you do have dyslexia. It's important to know that the Equality Act 2010 um, basically states that it's a duty to make a reasonable adjustment. So if you are struggling, dyslexia is the same as any other disability. Um, so at work, they are required to make adjustments. Now this could be kind of giving you the right software needed, giving you a proper stand on your Mac, uh, printing things out in different color, whatever is a reasonable adjustment, work is required to do. So it really is worth looking into what uh, people are entitled to. Um, now, this is kind of the main part of the workshop, but I just want to like uh, kind of round it up on this in this video I made. So, in part of my workshops, I'm creating different videos on different disabilities and different dyslexia things. Um, so, yeah, this is a short video summing up what I do in my workshops. Hey, my name's Nat, and I read in a very unique way. At school, I thought myself as stupid. Not only could I not read, I could not retain any information. I never left the bottom sets. It turns out, I was not stupid. I was the opposite. I was dyslexic. Dyslexia is like hacking into MI6's computer every time you want to search Google. It can be a right pain in the arms. My spelling skills look like a naughty teenager's text message. This may sound like a negative, but people like Einstein, the father of relativity, F. Scott Fitzgerald, and my personal idol, John Lennon, would disagree. They all had it, you guessed it, dyslexia. Being different may sound like a disadvantage, but I promise you, it's anything but. So, how is dyslexia good? As a dyslexic, it is easy to see beyond the obvious. Finding patterns is second nature. What I lacked in spelling, I'm more than made up for in my creative storytelling. Old Pablo Picasso and Andy Warhol, other dyslexic alumni, depicted their world how they saw it too. Hmm. So, let me explain how I got around any issues of dyslexia. When I'm writing, I use coloured paper because the words look so much clearer. I use audiobooks to keep me focused while I'm reading. Or if I'm on my computer, I'll get the speech tool to read it out to me. I can speak to you. If I'm taking notes, I'll draw pictures and symbols instead of words. And here's where I get really creative. I make up mnemonics for some words. The word said becomes Superman and I dance. Because big elephants can't always use small exits. Or could you are in the middle of a cold. So, if you have dyslexia, do not worry, just be creative. So you have to read a page twice or ten times, that's okay. The positives far outweigh the negatives. You need to find out what works for you. Dyslexics, we are trained to find solutions and overcome obstacles. Never give up and be proud of being you. Dyslexic and proud. Um, cool, yeah. Oh, bless you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, just to summarize, um, I'd say this is one of my favorite quotes. Arguably, like, Einstein never said it, but I like to think he did anyway. Um, <laughs> so, like, everyone, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. So, I thought it's kind of same for me is, uh, find out how you work and you can be amazing. Like, that fish is an amazing swimmer but it'll never climb that tree. Um, but it really helps, like, keeps me going. Um, so yeah, that's my workshop, and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it.
different skills to my team. So if we want something that is creative, is a little bit different or whatever, it's Nat we always go to to do it because he's very good at doing that. Um, so it's not a disadvantage at all having that in my team. In my fact, it's an advantage having it in my team. And for me, I just do if I don't send Nat big long emails, do I? No. So we, what we do is we sit down and have a conversation. Nat makes the notes in the way that's right for him about that conversation to take the action for me. Um, but yeah, it's an advantage having it in my team mm -hmm. because of what. And that video, just then, do you want to explain briefly how you, how you made that video? Um, oh, well, yeah, for the video, I was able to get like funding for it, so I get all the equipment, and I did like a whiteboard animation style. Um, so you draw it, and you wipe it, and you kind of put it together. So I'm making a whole like range of videos at the moment for it. Uh, but just to expand on that, so I've been able to get funding from like a range of organizations. So, so far I've had it from Uprising, V Inspired, O2 Think Big, um, and a few private people. Now I'm trying to do a bid at the moment for two and a half grand so I can keep my workshops going. So all I need from you guys is, um, so when um, Sarah sends you an email with a survey, if you could just fill it in because that way when I do my bid, I'll be a lot more successful. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Oh well, yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah. Sorry, mate. Yeah. Um, the difference it makes to me is that rather than the words kind of like kind of jiggling about and kind of like moving around, it just kind of tells them to stay still. Um, it's like stay where you, you're supposed to be. Um, it keeps my brain more focused. Um, and I think like the different colors work for like different people depending what wavelength your brain uh, struggles to like pick up or decode with. Can I just ask yeah. you about when you did your qualification you were working with? Yeah. Because that was one of the first ones to complete. complete yeah. And your, the way that you put this evidence together was all through videos, isn't it? Yeah, whenever I do applications um, for like I know for like things or if I want to get things to do, I always do videos. So um, I have like over a thousand videos on YouTube now um, for all my applications. Um, I thought like if I was still written application, the likelihood I probably won't get the job. But if I find a more creative way of doing it, such as doing a video, my passion comes across, my like vocabulary comes across words I wouldn't be able to spell normally. So yeah, just finding different solutions to everyday problems. Um, it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's Nat Hawley or Cartoon Nappy because it was old. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm creating more videos at the moment. So the chances you, you have words and stuff, do they translate to numbers? Um, well, with number, it's like discalcular, but like dyslexic people also have it. So yeah, numbers is like also a difficulty, but you find more visual ways of doing it. Like when I was doing like the one out of 10 dyslexic people, I like, I visualize about how many people. So, um, yeah, different ways around it. And it's a bit old school, but I do use an abacus. <laughs> yeah? Can you recommend any good tools um, online? And then there's that uh, dyslexic, I'm not sure what the name was, abacus.org. Is there anything that you can put a website into and it'll change the background colour or anything? Um, in terms of like online stuff, I'm not entirely sure about that, but with the um, read and write software, um, that, that does do that. So it will actually change the color of the screen. There is a software, I think it's called like Sunrise. Uh, yes, you know? Clara Read. Perfect, yeah. So that would do it. There's quite a few bits of software, especially like Chrome attachments that do similar things. Yeah? Um, do you have any recommendations um, if you're writing an email to someone with dyslexia, it's again, be very conscious about the font you use because it does make a difference. Um, you can actually change the background, the color yourself. Um, again, with like contrast. Um, so if you have a red background and you're using like a dark font, it's going to be difficult to read. Um, when it comes to language, um, again, just be a bit more conscious. If you can say a different way of writing it. Um, oh, it's my mum. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, there's, yeah, you can just, um, not, I wouldn't say dumb down your language, but do it, explain it in a way that, so if that one word they get stuck on, they can work out what it's trying to say uh, elsewhere. Yeah. 
All right, perfect. All right, cheers, guys. All right. Very quickly, a massive thank you to Nat, who has put a lot of time and effort into um, his presentation. It's a fantastic session, and we'll be looking to get it up on Trustnet shortly. So keep an eye out. Hey, I'm Nat, and thank you so much for watching my video on dyslexia empowerment. At the moment, I'm creating a whole range of workshops to help empower people to see the positives of their condition. If you think this is something that you would benefit from or your organisation, please contact me via my Twitter. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.